Capricorn, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for February 2018. So Capricorn, before we jump in, I want to say a big fat thank you to my friends over at Hair Entourage who have hooked me up with a cool little piece to share with you guys until I'm get get my hair where I want it to be. It's growing out and I'm enjoying that, but it's fun to also still play and plus you know I change my hair every 5 minutes. So, if you want any details about Hair Entourage, they have beautiful pieces hand custom made. You can click in the description box down below. I've put all of the details. All right, Capricorn. So this month, one of the things that's actually very cool that we get to consider for the month is that we don't have a full moon happening this month, which means there's no big like voila happening or anything like that. It's kind of a ready, steady month where it's not so great in the second half of the month to make big decisions, but there is still a lot happening, especially for you, because as we're coming into February, really big energy for you is that you've got the sun, Venus, Mercury, all in a Aquarius. This is lighting up your second house space. So of course, is this about finances? 100% finances could be in the mix, but something bigger I think is happening here in February. We've got all this love. We've got all this talent. We've got all of this stuff going on. And that's what I think creeps up for you. You have maybe had an idea or a talent or something like that, that you can take and put into production and actually make money off of it. Whether this talent has been hidden or you know you have it and people know you have it and you haven't really been doing anything with it, there is certainly a space where you get to bring something of value from yourself originally to the table. And I think that this month, especially in this first half, you're gonna spend a lot of time doing that. And then the new moon solar eclipse that we're gonna have is also happening in your second house. So we know that whatever this talent is, it's bringing you a fresh new beginning. It could even be a new stream of passive income, something like that. It's bringing new value, new self-esteem, new being for you into the world. So it's gonna be a really cool kind of energy I think to work with this month, especially because we do have the influence of Uranus making connections for Capricorn several times this month. So we know that it's new, it's innovative, it's maybe even unexpected, it's original, and it is about leaping you forward. You could just have this spark of inspiration this month where you're like, that's how I should do this. And that leads you to be able to do the Capricorn thing, which is achieve, right? <laughs> now we've also got Venus and Mercury both moving on this month. And this is where I think the month just gets delicious for you as well. Because you've got all of this energy happening in the second house, value, talent, finances, self-esteem, all of this good stuff, and you're able to make money with it. But in order to make money with it, you've got to be able to get it out there, right? So when Venus and Mercury and the sun all move on from Aquarian energy and move into Pisces, then Venus here is very comfortable. Venus likes being in Pisces. She just puts some, some good, mellow, sensual, beautified, magnetic juju on your words because it's moving into your third house. So now your communication space, your thinking space, your putting something out there space becomes open and available for you to take whatever this is and you can sell it. You can, if you needed to mediate a situation, you know, you got to have a conversation. Maybe you've had a stick relationship or a sticky um, time maybe getting something done maybe even something related to technology maybe you just couldn't get that website to go whatever it is it really brings you to a next level because Venus wants to bring money and she wants to bring a sense of beautification and harmony to the table so I think that this month actually has a beautiful potential for you to acknowledge something that you can be doing and I also feel like you have a lot of support this month to do Whatever it is to hone this talent or this money-making opportunity, this value-making opportunity, and then to put it out. So let's talk about the month just based by date, okay? Right at the beginning of the month here, what we've got going on on the 10th is Venus moving into the sign of Pisces. Like I said, she's very comfortable here. Um, it gives you a lot of grace, right? Like Venus makes you very graceful in how you speak. So if you did need to do any kind of communicating, um, you needed to negotiate something you want to sell something, um, maybe you want to adjust something in, in even your childcare things because you are a Capricorn, so we always need to look at home as well, right? 
this gives you that extra bit of honey on your tongue, which is really great. Now, here's the other thing I also feel like in this th third house energy that it brings to the table is maybe a collaboration of some variety. So keep that in mind right here on the 10th, okay? Then we get to the 15th and we've got the solar eclipse, which is the new moon for the month at this place where we're going to start these new beginnings. This is happening in your second house, making some nice connection with Uranus. So we know you could have fast money, unexpected money. There's magic, there's talent there's income there's value there's self-esteem all happening here and being where it's in making a connection with Uranus this could be from an unexpected source in an unexpected way but whatever it is the solar eclipse is already in Aquarius, making a connection with Aquarius's ruling planet. So we know that the Uranian energy here is definitely amplified, right? And it may also have something to do with taking a portion of your business or what you do into a technological direction. So be very open-minded around that, okay? Now, I don't know that you're going to be completely ready to launch absolutely everything out this month. I actually think you will do that a little bit closer to March because you've also got Mars and Sagittarius this month and it's in the 12th house for you. So you could be working on something behind the scenes and getting it prepared to launch out. And so maybe some of what you're doing this month as well as having conversations with people, collaborating, starting to get the thing off the ground, getting your own ideas together. Be open to whatever that exploration looks like. But when we get to the 17th, we see Mercury stepping into Pisces and while this makes really favorable conversation for needing to negotiate something or being creative or being forgiving or compassionate Mercury is in fall when it's in the sign of Pisces so it's not his full expression he is not comfortable here so really from the 17th on in the month I think that conversation can get a little foggy, right? Mercury wants crisp, clean cut, specific conversation and decision making. And in Pisces, things get too blurry. So it can't happen that way. As well on the 17th, we have got Mars in a square to Neptune here. So now your action may feel a little bit confusing. How do I handle this? Which direction do I take this? There's no push, there's no rush. Lean into the fantasy of things, lean into the creativity. We still need that creative spark, right? Then we get to the 18th, the sun moves into Pisces, so that's actually bringing some really nice vitality to the table. But on the 25th, Mercury is going to align with, with Neptune. So again, we still see Mercury in a state of fall. Where the action is going to be the strongest, where the thinking is going to be the strongest, is in the space of compassion, forgiveness, creativity, um, re-looking over, re-editing something maybe that you wanted to speak about or put out. And then on the 28th, we see Mars actually in a square with, Net with uh, Mercury. So again, from the 25th to the 28th, I feel like your action really gets very frustrating. So this could also be that you're having a heated conversation with somebody in a square. We could have another person involved here, right? So if there is heated conversation, use all your Venus grace that you've got going on for the month to kind of navigate that situation. Now, I will say again, from the 17th to the 28th, I don't feel like these are the strongest dates to make really big decisions. Signing that brand new contract, especially with these energies roaming around your third house, you're not seeing all of the details quite likely. So these are things to put in your back pocket. Consider them for your month. I hope that you keep me posted on what is happening for you, especially around the solar eclipse. How is this panning out for you? What are you experiencing? What did the lunar eclipse show you? That happened in your eighth house. So I would love to hear all about it. So put that in the comment section down below. I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursdays this month where we will be talking about the transits. So if you hear me say that Mercury is going to be in Pisces in your third house and you're like, my Mercury is not in Pisces, come and learn about what I'm talking about when I'm talking transits. So I look forward to seeing you there. That's also in the description box and in my brand new format of my Astrology 101 class, which will be launching out March 10th. And because I'm throwing a new format at you for this session only, it is 50 bucks. You can take all five weeks for 50 bucks. So I hope to see you in any of those forms, fashions, and definitely down below in the comment box. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in March. Bye.